All right, you all ready for example number two from the friction notes? Okay, good, me too. Let's go. So example number two, coefficient of friction between a box and a wooden ramp is 0.45. The mass of the box is 12 kilograms, and the ramp is at a 35 degree angle. Will the box slide? Interesting. Okay, I gotta erase my work from example number one. Um, but yeah, this is a great question, right? You know, if if you're designing like a ramp for a moving truck or something, um, this is the kind of stuff that the engineers of you know of that ramp might need to take into account. Like, what's the maximum angle you can have this ramp be so that boxes will or will not slide when when you know people leave the box on the ramp stuff like that anyway so let's draw a picture of the situation um here we go here we go all right so there's our ramp um our ramp makes an angle of 35 degrees to the ground and here is our box okay Great. So, with a different color, I'm going to start including what are the forces involved here. Does this work? Yes, it does. So I'm going to use this green marker to start um, talking about the different forces involved. Well, first and foremost, we have the force due to gravity, which, as always, is directed straight down. So force of gravity here, I'll call it Fg, is equal to mass times... Well, I, I'm not going to put that number in there yet, just because... It's going to get pretty messy in there in a second. So, yeah, that's the force of gravity. Um, since this is on a ramp, okay, what happens to that force of gravity is it gets split up into two separate components, okay, one of which goes in the direction of the ramp and one of which goes perpendicular to the ramp. In other words, the rollers, okay? So here's what they look like. So this is the normal force, which is equal, you know, there's a pair of them, right? So one goes this way, it's pushing down the box and the ramp, and the other one is pointed up, right? There's a normal force. And then the other one, like I said, is in the direction of the ramp. And I'm going to call this force the force parallel, meaning that this is the force, the component of the gravity force that is pointing in a direction parallel to the surface of the ramp, okay? And so here we have this interesting looking, like there's a right triangle, there's a few right triangles in there, right? Um, I'm gonna take this picture and redraw it. Here's my force of gravity pointing down. Here's my normal force that is perpendicular to the ramp. And here is my force parallel. Okay, and the 90 degree angle is between the normal force, so that's, that's my right triangle, okay? We know the force of gravity is mass times acceleration, so in this case it's 12 times 9.8, okay? But what about these ones? Well, these ones, and you, we, we did draw a situation like this before, and you'll have to maybe sort of trust me on this, but um, this angle here is the same as this angle here because of the geometry of parallel lines in transversals. So again, if you, we talked about this before, I think, if, if that's something that you're not quite sure what's going on, then that's a perfect reason to um, hit me up at office hours or something, but, um, you just, or, or you could just trust me that this angle here is the same as this angle here, okay? They're similar right triangles. So um, that's 35 degrees, which means if we know that angle and we know this is the right triangle and we know this force of gravity, we can get what the magnitude of these other two components are. The normal force then would be, since it's the adjacent side to this 35, it would be the hypotenuse, the force of gravity, times the cosine of 35 degrees. 
Okay, that's the normal force. The force parallel would just be the force of gravity times the sine, 35 degrees. Okay, and and we can compute these numbers really relatively in a relatively straightforward way because I have a TI 84, TI 83 plus calculator. Um, so let's just knock this out. 12 times 9.8 is 117.6. Okay, so let's just summarize this. Force of gravity equals 117.6 newtons. If I multiply that by the cosine of theta, or 35, 96.3. So the force normal is 96.3 newtons. And the force parallel, um, 17.6 times sine of 35, 67.5 newtons, okay? All right, so that was a lot. So maybe it makes sense right now to um, just kind of summarize where we are and where we're trying to go. Remember, we're trying to figure out, will this box slide or will it stay where it is, okay? Will it slide or will it stay where it is? Well, we know one of the forces that's going to try to pull it down is the force parallel. Right, force parallel is 67.5 newtons. What's working against that? The force of static friction. The force of static friction is fighting against the force parallel. So, which one wins? Which one is bigger? Well, what is the force of static friction? Force of friction equals normal force, which is here times the coefficient of static friction. What is the coefficient of static friction? 0.45. And the normal force is 96.3. What does that equal when you multiply them? 96.3 times 0.45. 43.3 newtons. The force of friction is 43.3 newtons. The force parallel is 67.5 newtons. Which one wins? The force parallel, which means the box will slide. The box will slide in this, in this situation. Okay, so there you go. That's it for example number two. I'll be back and then we'll talk about this next example number three. All right.